Hello, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Professor Raj Prasad, and I practice in Bristol, UK. Uh, what I'd like to talk to you about is treatments for benign prostatic hypertrophy. Now, this is a disease that affects many, many men, and I won't go into the details about how it affects you, but we know it impacts heavily on males, male patients' quality of life. Now, in the, the beginning of the, the, the treatments involves uh, behavioral changes with drinking habits and caffeine intake and so forth. Then we progress to tablet therapy. And after that, if these uh, adjustments don't work, we're left with surgical intervention. Now, because uh, you can tell from my gray hairs that I am very old and with it comes experience, uh, I've done many different procedures for uh, benign prostatic hypertrophy. The traditional one, and I won't call it a gold standard that many do, is TURP, which, is, which involves cutting through the prostate to reduce the volume of the gland that obstructs the bladder causing symptoms. You're cutting through a gland with a very high vascularity, i.e. lots of blood vessels, and you're not necessarily sealing them all off. So. It won't surprise you to know that after such a procedure, the rate of bleeding, the rate of clot, retention, infection, pain, other problems such as cystitis, prostatitis, are frequent and common. So for that reason, I don't call it a gold standard. And for the very same reason, over the years, we've looked at alternative treatments that are minimally invasive. It's a term you'll come across, MIS, minimally invasive surgery. In other words, for the men we're treating, by and large, who suffer with BPH, there are numbers of complications that can arise because of their so-called comorbidities. So many patients have a dodgy heart, they're on blood thinners, they're on antihypertensives. You don't want to do an operation that's going to stress the patient physiologically. That's why these minimally invasive treatments have come online. And over the years, I've done things like heating the prostate, microwaving it, lasering it, interstitially ablating, all sorts of things. These practices have come and gone. They haven't stood the test of time. Um, more recently, uh, we've, and, and, and believe me, I'm a, a very conservative surgeon. I was a big doubter of this procedure. It was related to me as injecting steam in the prostate, leaving it and letting the prostate involute or shrink to reduce the bulk of the gland that's causing obstruction to the bladder and all those horrible symptoms, getting up at night, straining to pee, dribbling after peeing and so forth. I, it took me a while to be convinced that I should actually look at this procedure. So I did and did it very cautiously it, it involves um, basically injecting steam at several parts of the prostate strategically to cause optimal shrinkage. And there's a clever device with a right angle needle attached to the steam uh, production uh, kit, which does this. The first appeal of this is that you're not cutting anything. You're not scraping away at the prostate. You're not, dis you're not destroying the internal lining of the prostate cavity the channel through which you have to pee. After TURP, where you scrape that all the way, of course you're gonna smart when you pee, of course you're gonna get pee, uh, uh, pain as you pass water because you've got a raw cavity that you're peeing through. With this procedure, you just make a puncture, this tiniest puncture to allow the steam to be driven into the prostate in several places. So you can see that it is immediately uh, an atraumatic procedure. There is a downside with every operation. So it's minimally invasive, but you do need to keep a catheter after the procedure. Now it's a soft, manageable catheter, and it's a small price to pay. And it's simply there whilst the prostate shrinks. Initially, after putting steam in, of course, the prostate will swell. If you leave the situation like that, the pro swollen prostate will cause um, blockage and retention of urine. So over the ensuing days, a week, and in fact, it is recorded that 
the, the situation goes on improving for 12 weeks. In other words, the new prostatic cavity matures over 12 weeks. So you, you go on improving and improving. Now, I can hand on heart say that the complications, the hospital readmission rate, the bleeding, the infection are, in fact, I've not had any of those complications. I've done quite a significant number now. I am, in fact, the only person uh, delivering resume as a treatment for BPH uh, in Bristol and the whole of the southwest uh, of England. So you can see I've had quite a, a volume of patients come through my hands. It's also um, a procedure which, unlike others, is not limited to a large extent by prostatic size. And we can go up to 100 mils in volume of the prostate. We can do small prostates as well. Um, but um, uh, the, the limitation on size is not as great as, say, for, uh, for Urolift, in which you, 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 can't, you can't do very large uh, prostates and you can't treat patients with uh, significant median lobes. With the resume, you can treat any configuration of prostate and, uh, and practically any size. Beyond 100 cc's, you would look to, toward homium or, or other uh, modalities like perhaps embolization to then follow up with a resume treatment. So I, I'd like to, in summary, assure you that this is the dawn of a new era, which is better for the overall sort of global health of the patients, not jeopardizing them in a complex, major, uh, physiologically traumatic operation. With all the benefits of a TURP, all it requires, requires from the patient side is to be patient and to make sure you're well educated about where to have this procedure done. It needs to be done in the hands of an expert who's done a significant number of cases. And finally, uh, a very important patient consideration is that if the prostate does regrow, and it does after any prostate procedure, uh, that you can think of, apart from complete removal of the prostate, if the prostate does regrow in a few years' time, the resume procedure can be done again. Even more so, I'd emphasize the importance of this because it is so um, minimally invasive, it's done as a day case, it is not like going in to have another TURP when you're in hospital for a couple of days, and have irrigation going through your system uh, for several days. Um, lastly, uh, I must emphasize also that as a very good byproduct of doing this procedure, sexual function is hardly compromised at all. And this is principally because when you do this procedure, you are staying away from the capsule of the prostate and staying away from those very important nerves to erection that course along and outside the capsule of the prostate. Thank you.